Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to our Good Friday service of darkness. As you see in your uh, worship folders, um, follow along in there. There's uh, responsive readings. The hymns are listed there. And please uh, note that we leave in uh, quietness as when we leave. So we will begin then with our opening hymn, uh, verse 1 of 151. First reading comes from John, 
chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some of the officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter had a sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Who has believed our report, and to whom has earned the arm of the Lord has been revealed? For you shall, shall grow up before, before him as a tender plant, and as a root of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We sing verses 2 and 3 of hymn 151. that year. 
Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teachings. I spoke openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in the synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? As those who heard me, surely they know what I said. And when Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, You aren't one of this, his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose Peter here had cut off, challenged him, Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the rooster began to crow. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he had borne my grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. We join in singing in 166. <coughs> Pilate said, 
Take them yourselves and judge them by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews, gathered there, and said, I find no basis for the charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. To continue with the response of reading. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We continue with verse 2 of 166. Son of God. 
And when Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Do you not realize I have the power either to free you or crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat him down on the judgment seat at the place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbathoth. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified, so the soldiers took charge of Jesus. We continue with the response of reading. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shears to silence. So he opened not his mouth, and was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he is cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Continue with verse 3 of 166. Jews, but this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. 
Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let us not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Our Good Friday devotion tonight is titled, Name of Wondrous Love, the Alpha and the Omega. In Revelations chapter 22, verse 13, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The Savior applies this name to himself. Consider how we use our alphabet when someone says, I have everything in my store from A to Z. They are claiming that they have it all. But when Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega, it is true. He is all we need for our salvation. Our text tonight comes from the reading we just heard, John 19, 30, which reads, When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. These are your words. They are the truth. Keep us in that truth. Amen. Good Friday, worshipers. When the sour wine had moistened Jesus' parched lips, we hear him speak. It is finished. Not with a whisper of a dying, but a loud voice, so that all I hear it is finished. He wanted the whole world to know because he was not referring to his agony and pain, the sweet relief from inhuman torture, the hatred and malice that broke his heart. So to find the answer, we need to listen carefully as our Savior speaks from the darkness in Calvary. We need to look closely at his face, <coughs> his bloody and bruised body is yet a bright light in our darkness, and it is a peace that passes all our understanding. His words are not words of a man who is suffering or surrendering to death, but the words of a soldier who had conquered in a battle. They are words of a Savior whose mission had been accomplished. They are words of the Alpha and the Omega, whose work is all sufficient for our salvation. With these words, Jesus is telling all that would listen that I have won 
My work of salvation is done. I have opened wide the gates of heaven for mankind. I have kept all of the law perfectly for every person. I have paid all your sins in full, and there is not one of them left, whether large or small. I have suffered the agonies of hell that all sinners deserve. I have endured the full punishment of anger from my Father over your sin. I have shed my precious blood to redeem all mankind, and now my work of salvation is finished. From his cross, the Savior could turn and gaze from the first sinner to the last and see no one whose guilt he had not covered, whose sins had not been paid for. His words, it is finished, show his wondrous love for sinners, for you and for me. And on Calvary, Jesus wrote, paid in full with his crimson blood. And on the bill of sin that we have rung up for God, finished, paid in full. He said, not one more penny is needed to be added. And in these words, we have the summary of our salvation, the truth that Paul expresses to us in Romans chapter 8, 1, that he wrote so well. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because of these words, we see Jesus truly is the Alpha and the Omega, what a shame it is that many who worship on this Holy Week have been taught that there is something that they need to do when everything has already been done by our Lord and Savior. We thank God we know that our salvation is done and we are children of our Heavenly Father. In our text, it tells us that he victoriously shouted, it is finished. Jesus then bowed his head and gave up the spirit. How different his dying is from ours. We die because we have to. Jesus died because he wanted to. Jesus said in John 10, 17 and 18, I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. Now he has proven it. Death stood near the scene on Calvary that day, but it dare not approach until Christ summoned it. With his work of salvation finished, Jesus was ready to return to heaven, from which he had come. Luke records the Savior's confident prayer, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. What about us? Can we and all believers have that same confidence when everyone else makes death so terrible? It's more than the possible physical pain, it's the dread and the knowledge of knowing that we must stand before the judgment seat of a holy and righteous God. And not knowing if we've ever done enough to earn our own salvation, 
But for us who stood at the foot of the Savior's cross this Good Friday, death has lost its sting. Our Jesus has fully paid the sin's wage. And now we can fall asleep in Jesus' wounds knowing that the last breath or the last beating of our hearts will be the soft knock at heaven's door. And when it opens, we will be home with Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is all we need to be in heaven. This Good Friday, as we have journeyed this Lenten season, we now sit beneath that cross. It's our Savior that was dying there. And he shows us how to die. So we as God's children, when we must give up our souls, we are handing them over to the one who is no stranger or an enemy. Instead, we commend our souls to the warm hands of the eternal love of our Savior, the one who is all we need for heaven. He will cradle us close. He will carry us home to the rooms he prepared for us on that Good Friday cross. And as Easter followed that first Good Friday, so another glorious Easter will dawn and bring our bodies from the grave in joyful resurrection at the end of the world because of that all-sufficient Savior and his wondrous love that will bring us home to heaven. When Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, we can take him at his word. He truly is all we need for our salvation and all we need for heaven. Amen. May the Lord in his mercy keep this confidence in our hearts. Amen. We continue then with our responsive reading from Isaiah 53. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was he in his seat in his heart. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put on him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and all his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. Please stand as we sing together beneath the cross of Jesus.
our sixth prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, give us your strength as we resolve to do your Father's work and finish it. That morning and evening we, lay, we live in hope, knowing that your great work for us is completed through the glory of your holy name. Amen. Our sixth reading is from Matthew 7, verses 51 through 56. Supernatural events. At that moment, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rocks split. The tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. And they came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. We continue with the response of reading. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify me. For he, he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide, divide him a portion with the great. And, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death. And then he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sins of many and made intercessions for the transgressors. We sing him 170. <laughs>
Please rise as we sing hymn 179. Seventy. 